You know, it's the little breaks and reunions in relationships that are often the most difficult to navigate. And a lot of my clients come to me with problems of separating for the most important reasons. You know, people have to go to work, they may need to travel, they may be sick. There are all sorts of reasons why there are breaks in a relationship. And one way of really finding out how solid your relationship is, is to focus on the way in which you reunite. That's the secret of deciding and knowing and feeling whether your relationship is solid and secure or really a bit shaky and on the brink of kind of falling apart. So let me share with you some stories that my clients tell me in ways in which have helped them to really make their relationship more secure and less shaky. So an example of one is one of my clients uh, were, is married to someone who has to go away a lot on business. And it could be for a week or more at a time. And my client, let's call her Mandy, uh, feels that when her husband is about to leave, she kind of shuts down um, as if she's already he's already gone before he's gone. And when he's away, she misses him. She tries to talk to him on the phone or they text or whatever. And she, they look forward to seeing each other. But then as soon as he comes back home, she goes back into that cold place. And she wonders why, because she'd been anticipating it literally up until the moment he walked through the door. They met each other at the airport, whatever it might be. And yet something inside her freezes and she finds herself becoming distant uh, becoming busy, uh, pretending like he never went away and came back. And what I worked with her on was the fact that when he left and anticipating it made her really scared and it reminded her of how awful it was when her parents would go away and they wouldn't tell her, they wouldn't keep in touch, they made her feel like she wasn't important, that they didn't remember her, that there was no continuity in the relationship, and that would make her very insecure and unsteady. So she learned how to cope with it by literally ending the relationship inside her, even before her husband left. That way she was in control, and she didn't have to feel all those awful feelings of, will he remember me? Will he miss me? Are we okay? Are we not okay? How will he be when he came back? Do you think he might have met somebody else? Um, how can I cope? And all the rest of it. She just ignored all those things by going into her icebox and literally freezing the relationship dry, cutting it off. Then when he was gone, she felt safe again because she didn't have to feel anything but yeah, I bet he's doing this and he's missing me and I'm missing him and just kind of going with the flow because it was safe. She didn't have to show anything. She wasn't vulnerable. He couldn't do anything to her until the moment of anticipation when he was about to come back and the meeting. Her heart would be beating fast. She'd be looking forward to it. She had thousands of things to share and tell and express and wanting to be physical, wanting to enjoy things, have fun, be spontaneous. But she went back into that cold place again. And there he was trying to be affectionate and warm and inviting and loving. And the more he did that, the more she withdrew into her cold place and punishing him. Nothing he said, did, offered, invited, worked. So what do you think this is all about? Well, if you think about what Mandy's doing, she's saying, oh, you left me. Now, just because you're ready to have me back in your life, don't you think that I'm going to be just a little puppy dog and come back to you when you want me? I'm going to show you I don't need you that much. I'm not ready for you. That's what the message was. And this is the most significant sign of an insecure relationship. When you, you feel the need to withdraw and punish your loved one because they had to leave you for a while. Even though your brain knows that they had a very good reason. They didn't abandon you for someone else. They didn't forget about you. They went to work or they got sick 
or something else took them away, something legitimate. But inside you, you're still feeling like you did when you were a kid, when your parents left you for whatever reason that you couldn't understand and it felt like you were going to fall to bits. But you didn't want to show them how badly you needed them when they came back. So you would pretend that you were fine and you didn't need them and they didn't really exist. That's putting the relationship at enormous, enormous risk. And one of the ways in which you can know that's happening is notice the icebox you go into before your loved one goes away and notice the icebox you go into on their return, but how warm you feel in between when it's kind of safe. Those are the telltale signs of an insecure, shaky relationship that really needs to find some depth and some meaning and some really good connections. And what I advised Mandy to do was to talk to her husband before he went away, to talk about how it would be for both of them. So they were kind of going on a trip together by talking about it, planning their times when they would meet on Skype or on the phone or by text or email or whatever it was, ways in which they would keep that thread going because they would be going together, they'd be anticipating it. They'd be anticipating their return together. They'd be making plans for what to say and do when he came back. So they wouldn't have to be this very rigid cutoff and this fear that just because you want me, I'm not ready for you, this punishing place, because nobody needed to feel abandoned. And that's a sign of a healthy relationship. When you can show your sadness when somebody's leaving, but also your happiness when they come back. That you don't have to pretend that you're a frozen piece of ice until all this is over and go to a withdrawn place or a punishing place because that just damages the relationship. And I bet we've all done it and we all might still do it in our most insecure moments. But now we have something else as adults. We have words. We can talk about it. We can anticipate. We can plan. We can imagine. And that's bringing it all back alive again. We don't have to go back and relive those awfully abandoning moments we had as children and freeze ourselves again in order to manage it. So those are some really helpful hints. And I've been really happy if you wanted to share some of your experiences of when you have to separate from your partner or your loved ones. What's it like for you? Are you the one who leaves? Are you the one who's left behind? How do you try and go and come back? What are the strategies that you guys use to reunite? How do you feel about your marriage and your relationships in this area? I would love to know. Tell me more and tell me more of what you'd like me to share with you. And I look forward to seeing you on my next video.